Hello, this is Haku Bean, and today we are going to be reading SCP-4001, also known as Alexandria Eternal. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. But let's get right into this. And we can't! Because apparently we need O5 approval. The file you are attempting to access is available to personnel with level 4 slash 4001 clearance only. This clearance is not included with general level 4 security protocol. By scrolling down, you acknowledge your consent to exposure to a known cognito hazard it because of no has this image. Scrolling down without proper inoculation will result in serious consequences. Attempting access beyond this point without clearance is grounds for termination of foundation employment and cancellation of all educational, medical, retirement, and mortality benefits. In the event of incapacitation or worse, by the cognitive has occurred below due to lack of inoculation and thus an attempt at unauthorized access, this is console will become inoperable. An automated viral agents will disable access to your foundation account, bank accounts, social media, emails, and any other aspects of your online identity. In the unlikely event of survival, security personnel will be dispatched to detain you and escort you to a secure site. You will be interrogated under or truth extracting memetic agents, then likely terminated. Consider yourself warned. Cognito hazard loading. Now we have a trippy image. Cognito hazard activated. Continue with conscious confirmed. Retrieving file. Welcome. Alexandria awaits. Item number SCP-4001. Object class safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-4001 is secured with a reinforced concrete bunker disguised as a warehouse constructed for its concealment in the city of Alexandria, Egypt. The blocks surrounding the warehouse has been purchased by the Foundation, and the buildings upon them are currently rented out to a number of business businesses and private individuals to help maintain the facade. All civilians and non-cleared staff attempting to enter the warehouse are to be turned away. All civilians and non-cleared staff found within the warehouse are to be detained, interrogated, and administered Class C amnestics. The use of lethal force if intruders prove non-compliant is authorized. Multiple se fail safes are built into the bunker, including automated guns, gas weaponry, collapsible floors, cognito hazard presenting ink screens, and a tombstone. A 300 ton load of impure iron are laced with thermite I charges set directly over the tunnel to SCP-4001. As a last resort, or the, uh, the charges was flooded into the tunnel with molten iron, severely delaying access to SCP-4001 and allowing response team it was time to assault and recapture the location. In extreme cases, the load of iron will also serve to protect SCP-4001 from damage if a nuclear detonation over the location becomes a tactical necessity. In the event of a large hostile assault against SCP-4001, all available teams are to be deployed to defend SCP-4001. Additionally, the deployment of SCP redacted, 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 and SCP redacted to defend or recapture the premises is authorized. They're using anomalies to defend a 4001. We'll find out why soon. Entry to SCP-4001 is restricted to level 4 and above of researchers with permission from the L5 Council. Open flames are strictly forbidden within SCP-4001. As our firearms or blade weapons of any kind, brought utensils of any kind may only be brought inside an SCP-4001 with the majority vote by the O5 Council. Breach of these conditions could result in a CK-class restructuring scenario or an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. Description SCP-4001 to the accessible tunnel leading down to an antechamber can Connected to a staircase which ascends 15 meters below ground. Titanium slash tungsten security doors have been constructed within the antechamber. 
The staircase emerges from a tower into a large room stacked with bookshelves. Attempts to dig into SCP-4001 from outside have resulted in digging past its expected location, indicating that SCP-4001 exists within an extra-dimensional space. The tower itself terminates its 12 meters above the ground, rather than appearing to connect to any roof. The room does not conform to Euclidean geometry. It is possible to walk in any one direction and eventually return to the point of origin. The room is 312 meters in width of indeterminate height, while well, SCP-4001 takes lacks of roof and has plenty of space it's above the shelves in non-Euclidean geometry means that it is impossible to ascend to a height greater than 25 meters above the floor, with further attempts to increase in altitude resulting in remaining at the same height and many hundreds of kilometers in length. Under appropriate lighting conditions with or, or with the use of it initiates, it is possible to see oneself in the distance by looking in the appropriate direction. The room is filled entirely by bookshelves. Each bookshelf is 2.8 meters in height and 100 meters in length. All these are aligned with 2 meters of walkway space between the shelves. An 8 meter wide main walkway originates from the staircase and runs in both directions. It's the full length of SCP-4001. With identical modern style the couches situated every 20 meters along the main and walkway. The repetitive nature of the geography means it can be easy to lose one's location within SCP-4001. The only otherwise distinct structure within SCP-4001 is the tower from which the stairs descend. Every fifth bookshelf has an electric lamp installed which are the only light sources within SCP-4001. As such, most of the space within SCP-4001 is poorly illuminated. No power source has yet been identified for the lights. The floor is covered entirely in a sturdy e-carpet. Individuals standing within the room will hear steady e ruffling noises, and on occasion, loud thudding noises. The source of the sound is in the origin of, the, of bookshelves and new books upon them which occurs continuously with any obvious source of material. New shelves appear at an approximate rate of one on every 16 hours, with several new books appearing each second. SCP-4001 represents the complete archive of every human life to date, and is continually self-updating. Every human being that has ever lived in a single course has a single corresponding book within the archive detailing all important de events in their life. This includes human-born SCP instances, so no book pertaining to non-human beings has yet been located, with the exception of SCP-4001-2. As humans are born, new books corresponding to them are added to the archive. Each book is identical in size and thickness, approximately the size of a standard paperback novel. The number of pages varies depending on the individual's lifespan, and breadth of accomplishments. The exact dimensions of every book, regardless of number of pages, is 12 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 2 centimeters. Each book is completely accurate in its contents, and thus SCP-4001 represents an unprecedented intelligence resource. Books are in stored in order of individual's births, and are and the spine and the front cover of each book is subscribed with the name of those it refers to. Each book is written in a language which is likely, which is unlike any existing language onto the foundation. While simultaneously being completely comprehensible to any literate individual reading it. The total number of books is estimated at approximately 120 billion. Each bookshelf is double-sided, each side holding 8 rows of 5,000 books, for a total of 80,000 bookshelves per shelf. SCP-4001 sorts each shelves in a line before returning to the same point, thus keeping in some 20 or, or 240,000 books per walkway, at 2.5 meters from one walkway to the next one. Thus, as almost 1 million books for every 10 meters one walks along SCP-4001, or 100 million per kilometer. 
At last estimate, SV4001 is well over 1,000 kilometers in light. Books can be taken from the shelves and read freely. Books can be scanned, copied, and photographed without consequence. If returned to any of the shelves, the book will vanish and reappear in its original location within the archives. Any attempt to remove a book from the archives results in the book vanishing and returning to its shelf. The contents of the books represent the absolute truth and history of the individual contained within. Altering the contents of the book, books has a corresponding retrocausal effect upon reality, with memories, locations, physical structures, physical states, and even complete existences changing accordingly to alter alterations applied to the books. Writing a decision, meaning, reward, change in personality, change in feeling towards the individuals, change in health, method of death, or any other notable achievement or light uh, life event into a book will cause that event to transpire for the appropriate individual at the first possible opportunity. <sighs> Discovery SCP-4001 was first encountered by Foundation staff in the 1800s after it was uncovered during an archaeolog archaeological dig under an old part of the city. The Foundation quickly isolated the location and administered amnestics to the archaeologists involved. The Foundation continued to operate the dig site for a few more months, occasionally pretending to find some pottery or bones in order to avoid drawing suspicion. Initial forays into SCP-4001 were done cautiously, since the extent of the room was not fully understood. Once researchers realized the causes of the archive and the basic nature of the books, advanced teams were sent with supplies to place flags at locations of interest. Since the bookshelves are not marked nor distinguishable in any way, 17 days after beginning the expedition, the first advanced team encountered a living individual within SCP-4001. Designated SCP-4001-1. The individual refers to himself as the Watcher of Alexandria Eternal. He had survived within SCP-4001 for nearly two millennia. See Addendum 4001-1. There are currently seven camps within SCP-4001, each with its own generators, water filters, and beacons to aid in locating it since it can take many days or even weeks to walk between camps. It is highly recommended that any attempts to foray into SCP-4001 are done by bicycle, with supplies of food, water, and backup sources of electricity. Though the ambient temperature and lack of humidity means that heat sources are unnecessary. Camp number, base camp, distance for, act from base camp, well, this is base camp. Persons of interest, new births and shelves, as well as first humans. Camp B, 20 kilometers back from base camp. Due to the continuous expansion of shelves into the entering in, in space, these values are steadily increasing. First birth in year 2000. Camp C, 130 kilometers. Albert Einstein. Camp D, 250 kilometers. Leonardo da Vinci. Camp E, 430 kilometers. Charlemagne. Camp F, 600 kilometers. Marcus Aurelius. Camp G, 970 kilometers. If walking forward from base camp. M to G D E approximately and the distance is approximately two hundred kilometers. Founders of Year The oldest of books are estimated to correspond to human births dating back approximately 75,000 years. None of the books contain references to date. It's with very few references 
They are named locations, making identification of specific locations or time periods difficult. Such books, if entitled at all, are entitled physicians with the society route and proper names, such as Firebringer, Hunter, Chief, Mother, or Friend Killer. Regardless of age, all books appear to be in the same condition as the newest of books. Analysis of the earliest books seems to support the human population well neck theory. Around 75,000 BC, the Tobosu volcano in Indonesia erupted with severe impact X on global climate. The theory states that this had a catastrophic impact on the a budgeting pro human population. Genetic analysis suggests the human population fell as low as 5,000 and breeding individuals in the few millennia following the eruption, with modern humanity showing unusually low genetic diversity as a consequence. No possible cause of all neck has been identified. With the vast majority of the earliest books representing individuals completely disconnected from those found in other books. As many as half of the books within the archive lack any names or titles, with many more of books simply being titled The Baby or The Infant, with the book detailing the short life of a baby who died before they could be named. Researchers note, due to, due to the exponential rate of human population growth, I am recommending we establish new camps every decade or so from this point. Otherwise, the degree of reliability in terms of delving the archives in person is liable to be compromised. Also, I am recommending we install and maintain a small electric monorail within SCP-4001 to facilitate ease of access or come up with some other practical method of assistance. There has to be a better way than having to ride with food and water for weeks to find one person's records. Dr. Lincoln Abrams, Archive Manager. Addendum 4001-1 Interview Log. The following interview was conducted with SCP-4001, the man found living within an SCP-4001. Initial processing of SCP-4001-1 proved difficult since he spoke no modern languages and no foundation and staff on site could fluently speak Ancient Creek. The interview was performed within SCP-4001 since the subject's extreme age had left him quite infirm. The interview has been translated from Ancient Greek. Interviewer, Gabrielle Katapolis. Hmm. Reminds me of, a, of the name of a city that we once read about. Interviewee, SCP-4001-1. For the record, this is uh, Dr. Gabriel Katapolis, found an ancient researcher and an anthropologist, interviewing an unknown man found within SCP-4000. Switches to Ancient Greek. Greetings, my name is Philosopher Katapolis. I'm an anthropologist. I study ancient civilizations. A philosophical or scholar or a tomb robber. You know not the danger of this place, invader. If you disturb the shelves, you will be cursed. A little of both, to be honest, though I am no invader. I seem to be fine reading the book so far. Do you have a name, SCP-4001? Why have you disturbed Alexandria? Who are you invaders with? The Romans? The Coptics? The Hebrews? I'm with a group known as the Foundation. We preserve and protect unusual things. We keep them safe and prevent them from being Endangered to mankind. You are not with the Roman Republic? No, the Roman Empire collapsed some 1400 years ago. I am Dr. Catapolis Worley. 1400 years? Surely it has not been so long. 
that's about yeah i'd say 1400 years is about right how long have you been down here who was the last ruler i do not know how long i have not seen the sun or the stars since i entered the last i remember there was unrest about the new queen Cleopatra the seventh. <sighs> Cleopatra the seventh, that's some um, nineteen hundred years. Nineteen hundred years. That is unfathomable, Invader. Impossible. SCP-4011 is signed for a few minutes. You say you have read from the shelves and partaken of the sacred knowledge. Yes, I have skipped over a few of the books. We realize what this place is and what it re represents. The team that encountered you was in was searching for the books Look of Someone Famous and planning to establish some bases in here. You who have read the sacred texts and not been judged. Perhaps your incursion is not a violation. My name was Theopolis. I am the Watcher of Alexandria Eternal. You must, she is the most important thing in the world. Alexandria Eternal, you in this place? Yes, this is our greatest resource, a record of eternal, of eternity, all that has ever been since the very dawn of man, a gift from the gods to us. Which gods? All of them, the gods of Olympus, the gods of the Nile, maybe even that god of the Hebrews. I have a feeling that SCP-343 has nothing to do with Alexandria Eternal. How long has it been here? I do not know. There are people here watching over here when Alexandria came and built his city over her. We kept ourselves hidden and eventually had the library built over her, er, an archive over an archive. Only a few of us know the secret door that led down here. And we passed the knowledge on to the worthy. Not even the pharaohs knew of this place. By the time I was born, she had taken on the name of the city she hid beneath. I do not know her true name, though I have searched long for it. <sighs> How did you come to be down here? I took instruction under the pre- is watcher after demonstrating my affinities in the library above. Though I suspect that is not what you meant. No. The Romans came on their ships, and they came and burned in their conquests, and the flames spread to the library. I retreated within here. <laughs> Excuse me, I was attend to myself. SCP-4011 pauses and pulls a scroll from within his robes, delicately unrolling the end of it. He draws a silver metal from within his robes, pierces the end of his right index finger, and, for the, and proceeds to write a sentence in his own blood onto the scroll before rolling it up and stepping it again. My apologies. Now the flames. Sorry, but what was that you just did? Given myself yet another day. Another day? You can use the books to make yourself immortal. No, I am not immortal. When the Romans came and the library began to burn, I, I retreated within here for safety. I heard the sound of rumbling as the library collapsed upon her. 
I could not muster the strength to dig my way out. I was trapped. How did you survive? Is that scroll... mine? Yes. The days that followed, I did not lack for warmth or for water, since we kept a few jugs down here. But I began to hunger. For a moon had passed, the water was drunk, and I was starving. In my desperation and delirium, I sought a way for Alexandria to save me. You use your own book. I traveled within, found my scroll, and wrote myself back into health. I quenched my thirst. I stayed in my hunger. I've used my scroll and my blood, cured every disease, every infirmity, and brought myself one and bought myself one day at a time ever since. How did you find the will to survive for so long? She needed me. She must have a watcher. Someone who walks her aisles, who appreciates her texts, who lets her know she is loved. She speaks to me sometimes when I wander from the light. The library speaks to you. She leaves me messages in my scroll, whispers to me in the dark, and makes notes of her whisperings for my perusal. What does she say? She tells me to wait. So I have waited. I walked her. End to end, many times over, I've read accounts of lives, some simple, some glorious, some beautiful, some ugly. I have waited through the changes. All of her scrolls by mine became bound tomes. Then these little books, as you call them. Her torches and sconces turned to candles. Now to these strange oil-burning lamps, as you call them. And her woven benches became these lever abound in press oddities. I waited for so long, waiting for someone to show up and tell me my a task had, had not been in vain. SCP four thousand one one falls briefly silent again. <sighs> tell me, philosopher. Who is the pharaoh now? There is no pharaoh now. Cleopatra was the last for the Romans conquered Egypt. Egypt has not had a pharaoh since. The Roman Empire grew, collapsed, and out of her ashes multiple empires rose. The Spanish, the English, the Dutch, and so on. Are they great empires? They are great, though they are not good. I see. That is perhaps true of all empires. Even Great Egypt was not a place of kindness. Nor were we able to aid the advance of Rome. We were so proud in the city. Alexandria was a great city, and her library was the envy of the world. But no one but us understood the true greatness she hid beneath her. Perhaps if we had just... No, I have thought of that alternative many times. And it would never be what she wanted. Philosopher, what do you intend to do with this place? My task is to keep it safe to discover its mysteries. To use it, perhaps, cautiously if we do, and only if necessary. I've already read some books, and I understand the potential. These empires you speak of, they must never find this place. 
they would exploit her without thought. Yeah, America's banned. Sorry, America, but you are not allowed to find this place. Just because uh, you would exploit it for innocent oil. We are taking steps to ensure that it remains hidden. Good, good, philosopher. Would you do me a kindness? I can make no promises. I would simply like to see the sky again. It has been 1900 years since I have seen the stars. 1900 years since I have seen the sun. It is eternally dark down here. There is no roof but the black void, and what light she gives us barely stretches the length of a shelf. I shall make a re request to my superiors. Thank you, Watcher. <sighs> Notes. SCP-4011 was granted permission to leave SCP-4001. With the assistance of Dr. Adopoulos, he was taken up the stairs to the surface on a clear night. He spoke briefly with Dr. Katapolis during his time on the surface, and died shortly after sunrise, and was buried in a small grave outside the city. Dr. Katapolis maintains that he spoke of nothing of consequence in his final hours, and has not been persuaded to divulge otherwise. Addendum 4001 to testing logs. All tests were authorized and overseen and by senior researcher, researcher Dr. Waylon Henricks with the assistance of Dr. Avon Travers. Test subject D0546, a healthy 35 year old male. Procedure Book pertaining to D0546 was located. Pen was used to write the phrase lost all hair in the book on the last page. Result, D0546 started shedding their hair, becoming completely bald after 75 seconds. Test subject D0567, an incapacitated and veteran 27 year old female, crippled three weeks prior to the uh, test. Procedure Book pertaining to D0567 was located. Pen was used to scribble out the line back painfully broken while fleeing from SCP redacted. Line located on the last page of the book. Result the 0567 suffered a slight nosebleed and headache. After 150 seconds, the 0567 sat up and exited their bed. The 0567 does not remember their injury and demonstrates ongoing symptoms of, of amnesia. Test subject redacted. Book pertaining to Redactor was located. Pen was used to write the, the phrase suffered heart attack and died in the book on the last page. Redactor was reported dead in newspapers the next day, having died of a sudden heart attack. Archive manager Abrams explicitly forbade the use of SP4001 to terminate a life after this test. Dr. Henry was as a monitor and disciplined and required to submit all experimentation and methodology to approve before, continu for, before continuing experimentation. Test subject D0120, a healthy 22 year old f 
female. Procedure. The book pertaining to D0120 was located. Pen was used to amend the phrase healthy and loud baby a boy born, six, eight pounds, six ounces, to hearty and loud baby girl born, eight pounds, six inches. Land located on the first page of the book. Results. D0120 suffered a severe nosebleed and headache, as said 26 Foundation staff, including all researchers involved in testing. D0120 flicked in and out of existence briefly, their appearance shifting from that of a young man to a young woman, before stabilizing and falling unconscious. D0120 was administered first or stayed in Class A amnestics. Notes from Dr. Henricks. D0120 has since shown gender dysphoria and continues to identify as a male. Etta has requested genital reconstructive surgery. Make them touch the agenda rock. You know what I'm talking about. Whew. Test subject 0245, a 45 year old man with a history of sexual assault. Procedure Book pertaining to UD0245 was located. Book pertaining to one Maya Hermes. For redacted years of age, at death was located. Pen was used to scribble out the line cautiously stalked, brutally redacted, and slowly redacted Maria Hermes, line located on the last page of the second end book. Result 0245 severe enough severe nosebleed and headache, as its seven foundation staff including all researchers involved in testing. The 0245 then disappeared, leaving no physical evidence behind. Both books also immediately disappeared and returned to their free places upon the shelves. Details of the books after, after the edit have had changed. The 0245 was later tracked down and found to have died three years prior in a violent altercation. Maria Hermes was found to have died in a car crash three days after the event originally happened. Notes from Dr. Henricks Her untimely death is unusual here. Possible schmidt lerman effect in play? The spirit lerman effect is the tendency of retro altered timelines to replicate events from the original timeline far more closely than would otherwise be expected under the butterfly effect. Presumably to avoid catastrophic chronological paradoxes. Test subject Dr. Claire Williams, 32, suffering from third stage lymphoma. Procedure Book pertaining to Dr. Williams was located. Pen was used to write the phrase was spontaneously cured of cancer on the last page. Dr. Williams showed immediate signs of recovery and better health. Notes from Dr. Hen Henriks. The film of the symptoms returned to seven months later. Test subject, Henry Adams, a fictional man whose life story was written into a book matching the style of those found within SCP-4001. Procedure. Book pertaining to Henry Adams was collated, then inserted onto a shelf inside SCP-4001 pertaining to the expected location for his chosen birthday. The book detailed an ordinary life, healthy constitution, complete lack of any connections to any historically, politically, or culturally significant figures, and culminated in a line ex explaining his appearance within SCP-4001. A semi-opaque, red-haired man appeared in SCP-4001. Showing signs of disorientation, after three minutes, he curled into a ball and began rocking back and forth before vomiting blood. Meanwhile, all the book placed onto the shelf rapidly began adding lines, detailing multiple tumors, mass organ failure, 
and instances of necrosis all across his body. Henry D. Adams died 110 seconds later, confirmed by the line in the book, died horribly, agonizingly, and justly from his organs seeing what they were always meant to. Twenty-four hours after the book was added to the shelf, it disappeared and has not been seen since. Notes from Dr. Hendricks We are not trying that again. I am deeply wishing this place had its rules posted clearly, like every other damned library in the world. Also, are the books mocking us? <sighs> Test subject D0900, a healthy 22-year-old male. Book pertaining to D0900 was, was located. D0900 was given a lethal dose of morphine and expired for, after 45 minutes. Immediately upon the line, died uh, through a cruel and, unusual, uh, and unnecessary morphine poisoning appeared in the book. The phrase... Morphine dysphemism resulting in a spontaneous resuscitation was written after it. Result, D900 coughed violently and regained consciousness. D900 was administered class B of Nest 6. No behavioral or psychological consequences were noted. Though D900 tested lower on a cognitive test after the experiment, possibly due to damage caused by anoxia to the brain. <sighs> Test subject, D0989, a 43-year-old female killed in SCP-redacted containment breach three days is prior. Procedure, book pertaining to D0989 was located. Pen was used to scribble out the line, fairly struck, torn in half, and crushed by rampaging a monster. Line located on the last page of the book. Result, D0989 repaired immediately in the class S quarters. The 0989 did not respond to any questioning regarding their state of being or memories. Nor did an application of Class A amnestics result in any change in demeanor. The 0989 suffered from severe headaches for 8 days afterwards and showed moderate disorientation for a few or 15 days before committing suicide. The only words spoken by the 0989 for the entirety of the time period were Send me back. Let me go. I wonder if this made a rule of not bringing back the dead. Test subject. Researcher Dr. Claire or Williams, sorry, 3, suffering from second stage lymphoma. Procedure. Book pertaining to Dr. Williams was located. Pen was used to write the, re write the phrase, was spontaneously and permanently cured of cancer and all other diseases on the last page. Result, Dr. Williams showed immediate signs of recovery and better health. Notes from Dr. Er er Travers. Dr. Williams has remained in remarkably good health for two years before mild lymphoma symptoms returned. She's going to need to keep doing this, it seems. <sighs> Test subject the O three two three, a twenty nine year old man killed in SCP redacted a containment and bridge twenty eight days prior. Book pertaining to the O three two three was located. Okay. Penalties read her phrase returned back to life on the last page of the book. Result the L323 reappeared immediately in the class quarters. 
suffering from cerebral hemorrhaging. The 0323 died 13 minutes later, with such information being confirmed within their book. Test Subject The 0310, a 36-year-old man, killed in an accident during routine construction and duties two days prior. Book pertaining to the 0310 was located. Pen was used to write the phrase, Return back to life in, in full and proper health, free from all, all infirmities, physical, psychological, and, and physiological, on the last page of the book. Result redacted. As a consequence of the damages sustained at site 85, the result of the experiment, Dr. Henrik has the motor roof was the mode and removed from duty at SCP-4001. Overseer, no oh, overseer notes. As of a redacted date, all testing related to the resurrection of the dead through any means is strictly forbidden. For all its potential, SCP-4001 does not enable us to bring back the dead. Though it can act potentially as a short-term lifesaver and a long-term life extender if options are that other options are voided. Never forget that there's limits to just how much we can and mess with chronology. Addendum 4001.3 Cataloging Assistance Systems On redacted date in the 1900s, a team of researchers and engineers led by Dr. Abrams completed the development of a simple AI and two corresponding robotic bodies with the intention of compiling a complete record of the estimated 120 billion books within the archives, and making acquiring its specific books from within a, a collection easier. Dubbed Marvin and Molly by Dr. Travers, they originally set to the task of compiling a database by scanning every name on the book within the archives, a task they took a little over 12 years to complete, as well as collecting data on every book. The cataloging AI I also located three skeletons, two human, one equine, deep within SCP-4001 and some 80, 38 kilometers past Camp C. Initial teams seem to have missed these skeletons, presumably since they were located in the dark areas of shelving. Based upon cladding analysis of their subjects, they entered SCP-4001 sometime before the 4th century, sometime in the 4th century BCE. Currently, Molly is permanently East Station adjacent to the Camp A boundary, adding new names to the database as they appear. Marvin acts as an aide to the staff, and if requested for a specific book, will locate and collect the book for staff, usually within a few hours depending on the distance needed to be traveled. Marvin has had wings installed on his body, and his programming updated to enable flight of spe at speeds up to 250 km per hour, with an SCP-4001 by flying above the shelves. <sighs> Note, on a redacted date in the 2000s, staff discovered a book entitled Marvin and Molly. After reading the book, the decision was made to temporarily remove the robots used in the cataloging assistance system. Whereupon the books disappeared 24 hours later. The robots were returned to SCP 4001 the next week, and the book reappeared in its original position, containing the a line Martin and Molly were returned to their, their true place of belonging, undoing the cruelty and callousness of their departure. The decision has been made to designate Martin and Molly SCP 4001 2 collectively. We're a little researcher note. We're a little tight. We're a tight little group down here in the desk. It's hard. It's not hard to get lost down here. It can get pretty lonely, and we rely on those who more than we can air to admit. They're very much considered part of the team. My best guess is that Alexandria considers them honorary librarians of a sort. You feel like they almost have personalities some some days. Doctor Avon Travers, archivist. Addendum 4001 4. 
instant 4001F. On a redacted date, redacted entered SCP-4001 and requested that Marvin collect a specific book for them. They had received appropriate clearance to enter the site, but not to perform any experimental procedures. Seven hours later, 43 other foundations and staff suffered from nosebleeds and complained afterwards of severe headaches. Prompting a response team to enter SCP-4001. Whereupon Redacted was found staying alone in the shelves, disorientated with a nosebleed and a book at their feet. They were escorted from the premises and detained for questioning. The book in question referred to one Dr. Jennifer Peters, the contents detailing a number of successful missions within the Foundation and multiple promotions to the rank of redacted, as well as romance, falling out, and eventually a spiteful rivalry with redacted. The first page of the book had been torn out. Immediately the attempt to repair the book was made using materials on hand, a needle and spool of thread. The attempt was temporarily successful, and an unidentified woman appeared spontaneously at foundation headquarters, flickering in and out of visibility, and alternating between confusion and disorientation and screaming and panic. After the event, Foundation records were searched. No documentation re related to a Dr. Or Jennifer Peters was found, nor could any Foundation staff recall ever meeting her. Researcher note. A reminder that instant SCP, the following instant SCP-4001-F, no non-archivist personnel no matter how highly ranked, is permitted to be alone with it while in the archives. All it takes is one nut job to tell one early page, and all of human history breaks! Dr. Lincoln Abrams, Archive Manager. Oh. You have insufficient credentials to access further er, er, addenda. Please enter level 5 security credentials to proceed. Addendum 4001.5 <sighs> On a redacted date, clearance was given was granted by a vote of the O5 Council for an attempt to explore below the floor of SCP-4001. Carpet knives, axes, and a jackhammer were brought inside SCP-4001 under careful supervision of the archivist and a patch of carbon measuring in 1 meter by 1 meter was cut from the floor near base camp. The carbon was raised without difficulty, revealing a concrete floor in a layer of ash. Under the advice of Archive Manager Lincoln and Abrams, the ash was sampled, the carbon was replaced, and the exploration attempt was aborted. Subsequent carbon dating of the ash suggested to be, be between 70,000 and 80,000 years old, and spectrometric analysis of the ash suggested resulted from the burning of wood and paper. Further testing performed at randomly select locations within SCP-4001 suggested the ash is located beneath most, if not all, of the flooring of SCP-4001. No records within a and Foundation archives or SCP-4001 itself describe a major combustible event within SCP-4001. Researcher or note, I spent more than half my life down here in these shelves and will likely spend the rest of it here as well, as did my dozen or so predecessors. I've always been aware that within here lies both potentially the greatest tool for the Foundation's success and the greatest weapon for the destruction of humanity as has everyone else who has stepped into these hallowed halls. 
Old libraries tend to develop personalities of a sort. Inviting and cozy, majestic and regal, aged and dusty. You must know of what I speak. This one, though, is unique. It has power, and it doesn't let you forget that. It permits us to fiddle with some of its rules, by harshly reminding us in us, when we step out of line, anyone who reads any of these magnificent volumes can't help but realize that the library has a personality of its own and passes its own judgment upon the yeah, actions of those whose lives are are interred within. Well, then, after you went and did all those experiments, when you where you pulled those books from their shelves and wrote all over them to mess with the lives of those beneath you. I went and had a look at your book. I saw what the library wrote about your actions. I saw how it expressed its disdain for your attempts to play God, to rewrite reality to our will. I saw its disgust for all of your sins. Yes, Waylon, I know every dirty little thing you've done, and more importantly, so does this place. It considers you arrogant, and it looks down upon you with far more disdain than I could ever muster. Yes, I've read my own book too, and Avon's, and the book of nearly everyone who has worked down here. On the whole, I consider the plentiful judgment levied upon myself and the rest of us fair. The library judges not just the actions, but intentions, and knows immediately how much the rest of us care for it, and how much we try to ensure it is an abuse. Never forget that this place is permitting us to be here. And never forget to respect it, lest Andrea could doom us all. Oh, that's going to another page. We can't have that, unfortunately. Well, that was SCP-4001. A library containing the lives of every human who has or will ever exist. If you liked this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow, we're going to uh, uh, be reading the story of how Alexandria was burned once in the past. So until then, goodbye!